What it do, YouTube? I am your boy Tony Vogue, E-Boy, and Zombie Slayer. Today, we check out YouTube's Darkest Videos, Part 4. Why Part 4? Because that's where we're starting. Yeah, boy disorganized like that, but that's okay. You're okay, just the way you are. Let's do it. And if the darkness is too much, get yourself some milk and cookies. I'm gonna turn my spotlight off for this. Look extra spooky. July 29th, 2019. Patrons file into a busy bar in downtown LA for the start of an always entertaining open mic night. You never know what types of performances you'll get on nights like these, or what kind of people will grace the stage with their presence. And on this particular evening, patrons would bear witness to one of the strangest acts they'd likely ever seen, and it was performed by a man named Robert Camus. Where's your funny face? Make my face. Robert Camus. Interestingly, Robert has a long history a here across YouTube, being featured in what seems like countless videos performing skateboarding oh, tricks this, with a group uh, of friends. But on this night, Robert was ready to show off another skill of his, as he skateboard. took to the stage to perform a freestyle rap. No. Never mind. Starting out, the performance was, well, a little shaky to put it nicely, which was at least partially to blame on Robert's apparent drunken state. But a bad night of karaoke in isolation is nothing all that noteworthy. In fact, despite the lethal doses of what cringe, many would actually view this as a great time, a funny memory, and even respect Robert for being so willing to go up there and just give it a try. However, his performance wasn't quite finished yet, and after fumbling his way through the beginning of the song, Robert's lyrics take an unexpected turn. Oh, shit. The messy video shows sitch? Robert as he raps the line, I Yo, killed my bitch sitch. and buried that bitch in the fucking dirt, before muttering that he has to leave because the cops are looking for him. It was a Damn. bizarre moment to say the least, and despite many in the crowd trying to play off the line as a joke, with the MC even saying that it was an Eminem inspired performance, others in the audience were more visibly concerned. Like this guy right as it here. turns out, they had every right to be. God damn. Well, we're inside this bar, the King Eddie Bar, and oh, this, this is where Camus was like standing when he did this rap version, and I guess the big question is, was it a confession? Parked out front of the establishment was Robert's gray Prius, and in the trunk of this Prius was a shovel, along with fresh dirt did. and fresh blood. Blood that belonged to his girlfriend, Amanda Custer. And coincidentally, that God very damn. day, Amanda Custer had been reported as missing after a neighbor had witnessed Robert carrying her limp body and placing it in the trunk of his car before oh, driving shit. off, only to emerge hours later, alone at this open mic night. What the fuck? In the moment, a bizarre performance was all this seemed to be. But today, many refer to this rap as being an actual confession. And in the end, this footage would ultimately be used in That's court so shit. and lead to Robert's conviction he for the murder snitched. of Amanda Custer. Even though to this very day, that wasn't even dry the body has never been found. But that if the words of Robert are to be believed, you know then it. it's sadly very likely that she's out there somewhere, buried deep in the dirt. God damn. For now, if you've seen Amanda Custer, police want to hear it from you. It has been three days since Amanda Custer's been oh, seen. Amanda Custer. <laughs> that was a dark video. Where were you when it happened? Good title. What is this? Liminal land. Remember, people have to learn how to swim. It's great fun, though, and something you can do with all of your friends. During the summer of 2022 in Kare Yosef, Israel, a popular corporate villa had been rented out by a local marketing agency to host a company event. 
The location was highly sought after due to its large outdoor pool area, making it the perfect spot for employees to unwind and connect outside of their typical working environment. And on this day, the 21st of July, 50 employees of this company would gather at the party to enjoy the hot summer sun and the cool water of the pool. And by all accounts, the party had been going off without a hitch. Until... it happened. As unsuspecting partygoers were hanging in and around the pool, some began to notice that the water level appeared to be receding, with one keen witness pulling out their phone to record the unfolding ordeal. And just as they hit that record button, things would fall into complete chaos. Well, Chaos is what we love. What just happened to that camera? Look at me all blurry, blurry. I am blurry, blurry, blurry. I am the blur sickle. I am blur. Suddenly, a large sinkhole opens up beneath the pool, oh, in turn creating shit. a massive vortex and an impossibly strong current, dragging up, essentially bundle. everything in its path down towards the opening. And within up, mere seconds, the pool, once completely filled with water, had become completely barren, with even the pool floats disappearing beneath the surface of the what earth. Is that? Luckily, at the time there were only about six party goers in the pool, and three of them had immediately made their way to safety, but one man could be seen standing dangerously close to the newly formed crater, even slipping and falling to the ground just inches away from being pulled into its opening. Thankfully, he too had managed to make his way to What's safety, the but the two others weren't so lucky. As, in the moments immediately before this video began, they had been sucked into the depths of the sinkhole. Of the two, one would be able to quickly pull his way to safety, while the other was nowhere to be found. As rescuers made their way to the scene and attempted to enter the hole, it was discovered that it was far deeper than anyone could have imagined, with later reports showing that the pit was a staggering 43 feet deep, with the entire opening being filled with water and the missing swimmer, 32-year-old Khalil Kimhi, was trapped at the very bottom. Damn, it would take God four damn. grueling hours of navigating that claustrophobic grave to finally reach Khalil, who by that point was sadly long gone, Shit. having likely already perished by the time rescuers Just even like reached the scene, the ground, passing the away fuck? in what must have been one of the most horrifying ways imaginable. The fuck? How's that After happening? all was said and done, it was revealed that the owner of the villa had built the pool in an unsafe location Dumbass. and had done so without a permit, leading to charges of negligent That's... manslaughter. And That's though this event was no doubt a tragedy, it. it's easy to see just how much worse this could have been if more people had been in that pool at the time. And what Damn. truly haunts me the most about this clip is just how unexpected it was. One minute you're enjoying a beautiful swimming pool, and the next, you're trapped 40 feet beneath the earth. That drowning with no you, chance man. of survival. All because of a freak Shit. phenomenon that is entirely unpredictable. Snow is mechanically pressed 1,800 pounds to the square inch and emerges in 50 pound blocks of dry ice. When placed in liquid, it returns to its original gaseous state. Desert ice is really hot stuff. Is it the. From one pool party to another, this next clip takes us to Moscow, Russia in February of 2020, where an influencer named Ekaterina Didenko was preparing to celebrate her 29th birthday. Just a few years prior, Ekaterina had graduated from medical school, earning her the title of pharmacist. But rather than going the traditional route and pursuing a career in pharmacy, pharmacy cool. she instead chose to use her expertise to start a blog focused on creating homemade medicines in order to save her viewers trips to the pharmacy. This type of content is nothing new, and in most cases it's highly controversial, and Ekaterina was no exception to this, with many calling her practices and advice potentially dangerous. This, however, did not stop her from amassing a following of over 1 million people, which was spread out across her Instagram page along with other platforms. And despite her content being controversial in nature, she quickly carved out a legitimate career as an influencer by 2020. And with her birthday approaching on the 28th of February, she wanted to throw the perfect party What'd to show do? off to all of her followers. She did some shit. Helping plan Only the night was Ekaterina's husband, Valentin Dedenko, who was on board to make the evening as grand as possible. And oh Valentin God. had the perfect plan, something oh he called a steam show. 
Previously, the couple had booked a venue to accommodate all their guests, with one of the most appealing amenities being its swimming pool, and using his limited knowledge of science, along with inspiration from a somewhat viral trend at the time, Valentin thought of a way to turn that ordinary pool room into something extraordinary. What By using it? dry ice to fill the entire room with steam, as dry ice combined with water creates an immediate dense fog in turn creating his steam show. And so, as the party was going on and guests were having a great time, Valentin decided to reveal the main event and brought all the partygoers into the room, giving them gowns and goggles to wear before dumping a box full of dry ice into the water. Oh my God! Oh my God! Water! Crazy! Material! Only what it's, it's like a bad idea. Let's go around. Instantly, the pool disappears within a cloud of gas, creating the incredible show that both Ekaterina and Valentin had dreamed of, with Ekaterina herself pulling out her phone to record the moment. And quickly, it became apparent that the pool wasn't just for show, as Valentin himself suddenly dives into the mist, what disappearing an within its hidden water. <laughs> The but there fuck? was just one problem. The chemical reaction that happens when Carbon dry ice and water that. connects doesn't just cause the formation of mist, it causes the formation of carbon dioxide that is produced in such a highly concentrated form that it appears as fog, meaning that the cloud we are seeing here is made entirely of straight CO2, which in such high concentration is toxic to humans, with it causing shortness of breath and eventual asphyxiation. And though Ekaterina's recording shows the group having the time of their lives, no one realized that when that dry ice was placed in the pool, it had in turn placed all of their lives in danger. Dumbass. Making matters worse, Valentin wanted the show to be as long-lasting as possible, and in turn, ordered the doors to be closed in order to keep that fog inside the small room, meaning that there was very little ventilation to filter out this toxic gas, wow. making the levels of CO2 not just very dangerous, but incredibly deadly. Well done, and Valentin had just dove directly into its heart. You played yourself, punk. He would break the surface just one time after this, and although the crowd cheers him on, believing he's just splashing around and having some fun, at this moment, his lungs were filling with fluid, and he was oh, suffocating shit. to death. As below the water, he was drowning, and on its surface, I mean, sorry, he was suffocating. Like he was trapped, Darwin with Orbs. the only outcome being death. Ekaterina then turns the camera on herself, revealing another man entering the water, as she's laughing and yelling in amusement. And behind her, all of her friends are seen recording the ordeal, oblivious to the fact that Valentin was now dying at the bottom of the pool. They were far too distracted trying to get the perfect shot for their own social media pages. In the end, it truly was the spectacle that Valentin and Ekaterina had dreamed of. Shortly after the recording had ended, partygoers would finally realize that something was terribly wrong, as some began to experience shortness of breath that eventually caused them to pass out. Meanwhile, others began to feel sharp pains throughout their body that were eventually learned to be the results of chemical burns. Once the room was finally evacuated, three partygoers would be unaccounted for, as Natalia Manakova, Yuri Elfarov, and Valentin were left in the foggy room dead at the bottom of the pool. Oh, what should shit. have been the perfect day for Ekaterina had instead ended with her becoming a widow. And as off-putting as this video is, many would point to Ekaterina's behavior following the incident as even more unusual. Immediately after the incident occurred, Ekaterina would start her grieving process by posting this video for the world to see, and subsequently vlogging her experience at the hospital and documenting the death of her husband. What a 
It was admittedly a bit bizarre, as many accused her of exploiting the death of her husband to gain internet followers, with further questions being posed as to why she hadn't considered the deadly effects of dry ice and water, as after all, she was an expert in the field of science. The scrutiny towards Ekaterina became so intense at one point that Russian authorities launched an investigation into her actions, claiming that it may be possible to charge her for causing death by negligence, what? though to my knowledge, nothing ever came of what this. The Just five whole months after the incident, Ekaterina would remarry, with those initial posts documenting the death of her first husband, leading to her gaining an additional 500,000 followers. Deep inside this vertical city, a machine has come to life. What kind of a machine? A machine with a terrible secret. Take the stairs. Oh no. God's sake, take the Not stairs. an elevator. Anything but an elevator. Elevator. It was a quiet bad, January bro. night in the Yuanlin Finance and Economics Building, located in western Taiwan. The 16th floor tower held its fair share of both office spaces and residences, though as the clock reached past midnight, only the building manager would be awake in its lobby. As he settled in for another uneventful night, the silence was suddenly broken by a woman rushing in with a small child. The man didn't recognize her as a resident, and given that the offices were closed for the night, he stopped her and questioned why she was there. The woman, however, brushed him off in a hurry, stating that they were only there to meet a friend, before entering the elevator and disappearing out of view. According to the man, he felt a bad omen in the air after the encounter and only grew more concerned as the morning arrived and the woman had yet to come down and exit the building. So out of curiosity, the manager turned to the building's CCTV footage to determine where the two had gone, only to see this. What's going on? Gotta look like a psycho. Oh shit. Wagwan. Oh shit. Oh goddamn. Inside the elevator, the woman begins hitting the button to floor 11 in what seems to be a panic, and as the doors close behind oh, her and her child, she then removes her coat and places it on the ground, before doing the same with her kid. When the elevator then reaches their desired floor, she quietly slips off her shoes and exits in a hurry. It's unusual footage, as their behavior just seems slightly off, and it's made all the more disturbing due to what they could or couldn't see on the cameras after that. Upon exiting the elevator, the pair are seen walking down the hallway on floor 11 in this grainy footage recaptured by the man's cell phone, well, with the two shit. heading in the general direction of the stairwell, which also happened to be the sole entrance to the roof. Okay. And from there, the oh, two no. aren't seen again. Oh no. They Noting jump. this, the manager immediately began jump, fearing jump. the worst, as their bizarre behavior coupled with the route seemingly leading to the roof could only mean one thing. And quickly, the police were called for what they believed to be a cleanup job, figuring that the two had jumped off the roof. This belief was further fueled by the woman's actions in the elevator, as removing one shoe prior to is apparently a somewhat common thing in Asian countries, as they don't want to track dirt into the afterlife. What the fuck? However, once officers arrived on scene and searched the entire <sighs> perimeter of the building, there was no sign of the mother and daughter, oh, not even a single trace of blood, meaning they couldn't possibly have jumped. Police would then look through the entirety of the footage and review the positioning of the cameras, only to determine that virtually all exits were covered by the watchful eyes of their CCTV. If these two had left the building, it they would surely have ghost. the footage to prove it. Though while sifting through the entire night, this the moment was man. the last they'd God ever be damn. seen on camera. That's so so shit, if they I hadn't thought. jumped, and if they hadn't left, then they must be somewhere in the building, they thought. Which led to a full-scale search of the complex, with officers going door to door searching every nook and cranny. However, while asking around, not a single resident had seen the pair that night, or even heard them for that matter. Not and when their initial resident. sweep was concluded, the police would be left empty-handed, only uncovering just a few set of clues. For starters, they would find the clothes and shoes left behind on the elevator, and they would also find the woman's moped, which she had driven to the building. And finally, they would find a single suitcase, found vacant on the top steps leading to the roof. 
police would go on to describe this piece of luggage as suspicious, but never revealed its true contents. In fact, following an initial report, they would never give confirmation as to whether it was involved in this case or not. Either way, it led them to a dead end, as they believed these two could not have possibly left that building, though at the same time, they clearly weren't there. Multiple times after this, the building would be searched and searched and searched again, even as recently as 2013 when they would go as far as to check the water pipes and even the water tank itself, which was inspired by an unfolding case of a similar nature halfway across the world, but no trace of the pair was ever discovered. Immediately after this footage was taken, these two vanished into thin air. That's some shit, man. How do you just Following vanish? the disappearance, local news would broadcast the footage where a man named Jung would come forward stating that this was his wife and four-year-old daughter. What? The woman's was surname was Leo, too? and the pair had four children together, though their relationship was anything but perfect. Multiple reports claim that on that very night, the two had gotten into an argument, with some going as far as to say that Zhang had actually abused her, causing her to leave the home in a hurry, grabbing only their youngest daughter. Meanwhile, Damn, their eldest Zhang, daughter would go boy. on record stating that Leo had told her that they were going to visit a friend's house just for a few days, only to never return. Despite the significance of discovering the identity of this woman and her daughter, it would ultimately fail to help solve the case, as there have been no sightings of these two since this moment, turning this into one of Taiwan's most mysterious cases of all time. And in the region, three major theories have emerged. First, many locals in the area believe that something otherworldly happened to these two, with one resident at the time stating, I think they entered they another time and space. Game. This belief is actually so strong that even as of just a few years ago, that 11th floor is practically left vacant, as the only remaining family on that floor claims that everyone moved out out of fear of the supernatural surrounding so the incident. The dark. Another long-lasting theory guys. was that the two were still somewhere in the building, having potentially taken their lives or just gotten stuck there. And officials believed this for years after the case, they assuming that eventually someone would happen upon them. Though that day has never come, and due to the extreme summer heat in the region, it's likely that the smell alone would have led to their discovery by now. Which brings us to our third theory, that somehow the two had actually managed to leave the building without detection. Due to the camera positioning in the hotel, this seems rather unlikely, but some claim that there is a specific route that potentially could have provided just enough cover for them to avoid all the cameras. But this would have had to have been precise and seemingly deliberate. Maybe what makes this so strange though is that Leo apparently had limited to no knowledge of this building beforehand, begging the question how she could navigate in such an efficient manner, or why she, she would want to for Japanese. that matter. And this is far from the only questions design. regarding this. Like, why would she even enter this building to begin I with if she was just going to leave? And why go to that 11th floor in particular and remove those articles of clothing? And maybe most importantly of all, she if she had stripping. somehow snuck around those cameras, how had she or her child never been a seen scripper. again? Nothing about this case makes Rick any Giants, sense. And scripper. honestly, what happened to these two at this point is anyone's guess as this is practically all the information available on their disappearance. Since then, there have been no sightings, no use of their health insurance, no use of their bank accounts, and their daughter's records show that she has never been enrolled to another school. It's almost as if they evaporated into that cold night air. Part of me hopes that this was all an attempt to flee an abusive relationship, and that somehow this was all just a distraction for these two to escape and start a new life elsewhere, which could explain that supposed friend they were going to meet, why they shed their coats, and how they managed to sneak out of there in the first place. But things of that nature are easier said than done, and I can't help but get a sinking feeling that they are no longer with us, as surely at some point, some trace of them would have appeared by now. But unfortunately, an absolute conclusion is something that perhaps we may never get. And instead, throne. we're simply left with I'm this chilling video, right. which is undoubtedly one of YouTube's darkest. Is it though?
Oh shit, is this the club the that celebration down? was well underway. December 5th, 2009 yep. marked the eight-year anniversary of the beloved Lame Horse, a roughly 5,000 square foot nightclub located in Perm, Russia. That's a big one. On the evening of the 4th, the club began to fill with partygoers keen on joining in on the massive party. To commemorate the night, a cameraman and an interviewer would be on scene yep. to document the events of that evening, which they did by first speaking to patrons as they roamed the club, getting their thoughts and opinions on the celebration. <laughs> Oh shit, yep. That's the thing the about nightclubs, man. There ain't fun, a lot of ways out. it was out. only just beginning for most, with the party set to go all throughout God the night. Damn. And as the recording continues, it's clear that the club had big plans to bring in this new year. Following the interviews, the footage shows us a view of the dance floor, which was occupied by a group of performers who had been hired to energize the crowd and further build the hype of the night. The organizers had even hired an MC for the evening, whose job was to keep the party alive. By this point, over 300 people had made their way into the building, as the MC continues the show by joking around with two young women the roof, who were clearly the guests roof, of the bar, the with the cameraman off, fixing his lens the on the three as the crowd watches on in amusement. But it's at this exact moment yep, that the, the camera unintentionally high. catches something far more interesting. Something that could easily be missed, as it seemed so unimportant in the moment. While everyone's eyes are fixed forward at the show before them, this woman, standing on the far right of the camera, barely occupying a sliver of the frame, casually turns her head, only for her eyes to lock onto something behind her. And noticing the woman's bizarre reaction, the cameraman follows her lead and turns the camera in the same direction, revealing this. <laughs> Okay. The, roof. the roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. Unbeknownst to pretty much everyone in the club at that time, a spark from the show's pyrotechnics had made contact with the club ceiling, which was covered in decorative twigs for the party. And within a split second, a fire would erupt. The initial shock caused many to freeze in place for precious seconds, unable to comprehend what exactly was happening. And it wasn't until the MC, the same one in charge of keeping that party alive, began to shout, Ladies and gentlemen, guests of the club, we are on fire, please leave the hall, that the patrons would finally unfreeze. <laughs> Following this announcement, the crowd flew into a panic, desperately making their way to the exit, which is where the first fatal issue arose. The club supposedly had two exits, one through the front door and the other yeah, located behind the stage. However, that second exit had no signs indicating where it was, meaning that practically no one in the room knew that it was even there. Because of this, most of the patrons began pushing towards that one main exit, Upon making his way into the hallway, the cameraman reveals the exit and, in turn, another devastating issue. In order to control the crowd going into the venue earlier that night, one of the two doors at the front entrance was locked, meaning that this small opening was the only means of escape for the 300 plus people trapped inside. And to make matters worse, by this point, the entire venue was now shrouded in smoke. As so many people were attempting to fit through that small exit, they became stuck, causing a logjam and in turn, a human crush. And the more people desperately tried to push through that door, the more jammed it became. Meanwhile, those still trapped on the dance floor were left hopelessly lost in that impenetrable smoke. God damn. And within the mob of people rushing towards that exit, the camera suddenly goes dark before shutting off completely.
Somehow, the cameraman, along with multiple others, were able to squeeze their way out of the exit, as evident when the camera begins to record some time later, this time in the middle of the road, revealing hints of the havoc that was occurring both inside and outside of the club. But tragically, this is where one last fatal factor was added to the equation, which was highlighted by a quote from a survivor and one of the very first people to escape the club. God damn. After I got out, there were no firemen or infirmary. emergency services oh, for shit. about 20 minutes. Shit. Nobody at all. There were only two ambulances altogether. They managed to take six or seven men and left. No more ambulance cars arrived, at least I saw none. Firemen had pulled out a number of people by then. Half clothed, they were simply laid out on the cold asphalt. Nobody cared for them. People were lying on the ground for about an hour and a half, definitely for no less than an hour. It could be that many of them died because of this, because of the cold. It was 16 degrees below zero outdoors. In what has since been heavily criticized, and rightfully so, the emergency response team only fueled the intensity of this disaster, as many of those trapped inside were left to their own devices, and those who were rescued were laid out on the street with severe injuries, and most of their clothes burned off, forced to lie there, unable to move for over an hour in the freezing cold. It's unknown how many deaths were caused by this alone, but if these first-hand accounts are to be believed, it's likely that many were. Not only had the venue itself failed these victims, but the emergency response team had as well. Ultimately, 101 people would die on the scene that day, and an additional 55 perished well, later in the hospital, I'm not smiling with the catastrophe at this amassing a death toll of 156 total people, making it the deadliest fire in Russia since the fall of the Soviet Union. Well, God damn, the footage from that night fire. taken before, Shit. during, and after the event truly account for some of the most disturbing on this site. But two moments in particular have always stuck in my mind. The first being that initial stunned reaction from the lady just off God screen, damn, as she yeah. had noticed what was transpiring like, before sheesh, anyone else. And the other being that first reveal dead, of the small fire on the ceiling the that would so quickly and so savagely engulf the entire Love building and claim the lives of so many. You don't want it like that shit. I wanted to briefly mention that I- Hey guys, that was a sick ass video, so... Show some support to the original content creator. Please subscribe, that was Nick Crowley. Um, he's come a long way, I've seen him come up actually. Hopefully one day we come up like that, but... You know, it is what it is. Alright, until next time, it's your boy Tony Vogue, the E-Boy Zombie Slayer. Pop.